Thursday, August 9. Herod's Persecution Turning again to Judea, we are faced now with the account of King Herod's executing James, the brother of John, and a son of Zebedee. And when he had gone a little farther thence, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, who also were in the ship, mending their nets. He also wanted to do the same with Peter. Read Acts 12, 1-4. What does this teach about the challenges the early church faced? Now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. The King Herod mentioned here is Agrippa I, the grandson of Herod the Great. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to, to Jerusalem. He ruled Judea from A.D. 40 to 44. As a result of his show of piety, he earned popularity among the Jewish subjects, especially the Pharisees. His attempt to win the favor of the Jews by attacking some apostles fits perfectly with what we know of him from other sources. Because James's execution was effective in fulfilling Agrippa's agenda, he planned to execute Peter as well. Peter was arrested and delivered to four squads of four soldiers each to guard him, one squad for each of the four watches of the night. Peter had four soldiers at a time with him. He would be chained to two soldiers, one on each side, and two would guard the entrance. Such extreme precaution was carefully taken to try to avoid what had already happened to Peter and John some time before. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Read Acts 12, 5-18. What happened in response to the brethren's prayers? Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out, and followed him. And wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out, and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety, that the Lord hath sent his angel, and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod, and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken, named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he, beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Now as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers what was become of Peter. The night before the day that Agrippa had planned to put Peter on trial and execute him, Peter was once again miraculously released by an angel. Next we find the story of Agrippa's death at Caesarea. 
and Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him, and having made Blastus the king's chamberlain their friend, desired peace, because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon a set day Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne, and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a god, and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory, and he was eaten of worms, and gave up the ghost. Attempts have been made to identify the cause of his death, perinotitis, and also even poison. Yet Luke is clear in saying that the king died because of a divine judgment. James is killed, Peter is delivered, and Herod faces divine judgment. In some cases we see justice, in others it doesn't appear that way. What should this teach us about how we just don't have all the answers to all our questions and why we need to live by faith regarding what we do not understand? Hello, this is Winston Gilling. Some persons prefer watching or listening to reading. Others are pressed for time and would appreciate a resource to help them get through the lessons, hence these videos. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and share with others. Also, please subscribe to the channel to be alerted when daily lessons are posted. It also helps me to keep them coming. Thank you.